Hello. There's two types of leaders. There's those we like to work for and the type we don't like to work for. Which one are you? Which ones are the most successful? Join me today for episode number 47 as we talk about leadership styles. Welcome to the Surging Forward Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Surging Forward Broadcast, where we're helping you to have a positive view and a negative world. My name is David Ballantyne, and I'm here to help you see the value in the job you do and how you can keep surging forward. Hello, hello again, and welcome to the Surging Forward Podcast. I want to welcome you again this week, and for those of you that are listening to the first time, this is a show that is for tradesmen and those working out in the field and those working in their careers who want to create a positive view in a negative world. Um, we get bombarded with so much negativity sometimes, and so I'm here to try to help you try to get to that next level. That's kind of what it's all about here is we're all supposed to be trying to help each other as being brothers and sisters in the trade. And, you know, fellow tradesmen and all of us work out in the field, we understand it's that hard work that helps us build the things we're around. Um, we had someone say a while back, and I'm not going to mention any names, but he came right out and said, you didn't build that. Well, yes, we did. Um, us as tradesmen, we work hard out in the field and Sometimes we get bombarded with a lot of negativity and we don't realize the success that we really have. So I'm just kind of an encouraging word to help you guys understand out there. And, you know, for the men and women that are working out there in the trades, you are successful. You don't have to have that big college degree. You don't have to have, you know, millions and millions of dollars out there. And some guys in the trades are doing quite well. Just take a look around and See some of the guys driving some of the nice big trucks and people are living in the nice homes. A lot of that just has to do with how you manage your money. It's not that they're not making any money. Um, it's all relevant. And so, you know, I see a lot of people talking about that. So we're here to talk about how to get you to that next level. And today I'm going to be talking about something pretty cool. This is episode number 48. And I'm going to be talking about the false stepping stones. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to be talking about two different types of leaders out there. Um, for me, as I teach the leadership to uh, a lot of tradesmen out there, there's two types of leaders. One is the service leader, and the other one is the servant leader. What does that mean? All right, let's talk about the first one here. The service leader. He's the one that just comes up into the trade and... You know, he works his way up. He, he, he's a decent worker. He does okay. But he likes to step on people to get to that part, you know, uh, get to that next level. Doesn't matter who he gets in trouble. Um, he's the guy who's quick to point the finger. And sometimes those in upper management don't really see the problem with this type of leadership until he's too late. Because um, as he goes up, every time there's an issue, he's very quick to point, okay, it was so-and-so's fault. Or he had this kind of issue. And uh, a lot of times when people see this, this is a hard person to be around with and because you don't know whether you can trust him or not. You see him constantly tearing others apart in order to excel his career. Uh, I would advise you, if you're around a leader like this, you, you know, don't get upset because it's there, but learn what not to do. Uh, because this type of leader is one that's not going to be able to trust anybody. And if you feel yourself like this, you might want to change your way. Because here's what happens. If you're that type of leader, or you've been around that type, we've already we've all seen it. They, they're not really sure how to get the wrong work done. There's a big self-esteem issue. 
And, you know, we talk about self-confidence and you hear that all the time about self-esteem. Well, self-esteem is something that is taught. Self-esteem is something where you learn a certain amount of skills. So you're confident in what you know. So let me talk about the self-esteem and the self-confidence for a minute. When you are self-confident about something, it doesn't mean that you're cocky. It means that you know what you know, and you also know what you don't know. That's important. That's probably the most important part of any kind of leader, understanding what you don't know. You see, part of this thing, thinking that I have to know everything, is such a false assumption. Okay, I teach the apprenticeship program. I teach third and fourth year, which is really kind of tough, but I enjoy it, and I enjoy, you know, it keeps me challenged. But there's many times a student will ask me a question that I, I don't know. And that's just the bottom line fact. And the way I always answer that question is, I don't know. But let's look at how to find the answer. And so I will help him and show him how to find the answer and show the entire class. So when you're around that person who thinks they have to know everything, a lot of times they're the service leader because what they do is they will listen to other people's stories and then they go out in the field and repeat that story and say that they did it. I'm always admired at the guy we sit around for lunchtime and you get the guy that just says, oh, I've been on this job and I've done this and I've done that and you've done this. And you start adding up the time on these jobs and go, wow, you've got, you, you know, you're 35 years old and you've got 37 years of experience. That's pretty fascinating. You know, how how'd you manage that? He must be pretty brilliant. No, he's not brilliant. He's just repeating stories that he's heard from other people around people that may not know the people he heard the stories from. <laughs> Does that make any sense? But that's what these kind of people do. And as you are in the trade longer and longer, it's very easy to spot those kind of people. So don't fall into that trap of repeating somebody else's story. I've seen it happen time and time again as long as I'm in a career. You know, everybody out there has a story. And I can learn from you just as well as you can learn from me. I don't care what kind of career you're in, whether it's a trade or, again, I've always said it before, or working at a bank or working at Walmart, working at a fast food place, whatever it is you happen to do, you have your own story. Don't rely on somebody else's story to make you look good. Again, that's kind of what a service leader does. He uses the services of others to make him look good. And he also uses the, the mistakes of other people to make him look good. And he tries to elevate him up. It, so it's all about other people's service that helps him get to that level. And he doesn't give the credit where credit is due. And that really gets to be kind of a shame because what ends up happening, nobody around him tr wanted him to trust him. Oh, golly, I'm fumbling my words here. Um, I may or may not edit that out. Uh, again, this is just, you know, I just take, I do these podcasts from the heart. And it's just my way of sharing a little bit out for you uh, to help you better in your career. But what ends up happening, he ends up not trusting those around him because then he starts feeling everybody's out to get him. And so then he lies more and more and more as he goes along. And what ends up happening, he doesn't have the support. And those that do support him or her, end up supporting them out of fear, not out of respect. And as I've talked about in the past, that's not really the type of leader you want to be. You don't want people to, you know, follow you due to fear. Because if they're following you due to fear that you've put into them, you're probably leading out of fear also. You're always looking behind your back to see who's going to take your job. You're always looking around and saying, you know, you don't trust anybody yourself. So you're ready to slam on anybody anytime. Well, let's talk about the other leader. I kind of came right into the negative part. And I really, the whole purpose of this show is to create a negative view and a positive. I got that totally screwed up. <laughs> to create a positive view and a negative world. Wow, that one I met. I better edit that one out. No, we're here to create a positive view. Negativity is around us all the time. And a lot of us work for those kind of leaders. We're just, there's nothing that, we're just struggling constantly. I get those questions quite a bit. And uh, for those of you that ever want to send a question, I'm not going to put your name out there unless I ask your permission. 
Uh, many of you guys send me questions. I get them through email. Feel free to send any time. And I've gotten quite a few of these where they say, how do I deal with this guy who just treats us like garbage? This is where this has come from. I've gotten quite a few emails, and I'm not going to list any names because what happens, the guys that are working under these kind of conditions, of course, if I list the names, and if their boss happens to be listening to it, then it's going to be like, oh my gosh, you know, I know exactly who that is. So I'm not going to put that out. But here's what happens. The people working around them under fear, they're not going to do as good of a job. They're only going to do enough to survive because they know the more work they do, that guy's going to take all the credit for all the work they did. And nobody likes that. So let's look at the positive side. What do the good leaders look like? Well, this comes from, brings me to my second point where you have the servant leader. Now, the servant leader operates in a little bit different mode. He actually has a very high self-esteem about himself. Does that mean he brags? Does that mean he's going to have to tell you how great he is or how wonderful he is? Absolutely not. That's not what I mean about having a high self-esteem. You see, I don't have to brag about what I know and what I don't know. Because I know what I know and I don't know. It doesn't matter. I can show you. I can teach you. I can follow, you know, follow through. And I'm not ashamed to say I don't know certain things. So I know how to delegate. I know how to find the information. I know who to talk to when I need a certain amount of information. And other servant leaders are the same way. Their main goal is to teach you to become a leader so that you can move up to a better position and you can excel also in your career or your trade. A true servant leader is not worried about you taking his job or her job. Because, you know, no matter how much I teach you, you may be in a position to teach me at some given time. So we work together as a team and we're able to get the job done. You see, a servant leadership is also one who is always encouraging others to move ahead. Now, granted, I've seen people move up ahead so much further than I've ever excelled in the field. I know people who have come under me who have gone way above what I've ever done. And that's fantastic. And I celebrate with them. And people ask me, say, well, wow, Dave, aren't you worried you're not making as much money as they are? Why? You know, I choose how much money I want to make. I choose where I want to be. If I want to work harder, I can make more money. That's, that's my choice. You see, the service leadership is worried about using others to make them more money and to step on them. And it's that dominant, it's a dictatorial shape uh, type leadership. In a servant leadership, we all work together as a team. And people are going to excel depending on how hard they want to work. And they're going to do a good job making everyone around them look good. And it's also carrying the guys who aren't so well, carrying them along with them. And that's the whole point. And that's where the dedication comes in. That's where teamwork comes in. That's where a good football team comes into play. I mean, if you're on a team where the coach is just beating you up all the time, and you go on that field and you're scared to death that if you don't do a good job, you're going to get cut or you're going to get stoned or you're going to get beat up or, or whatever the case may be, you're more concentrating of the, you're more concentrating on what's going to happen instead of concentrating what you need to do in the field. And so a servant leadership and ones that gives you the encouragement, a servant leader also understands that people are going to fail around them. Things happen. They also understand that they can fail. And they're the first ones to say, hey, I'm sorry. Or I could have done that better. Or when they go off, a lot of times they're the first ones to apologize. And I'm going to tell you something. Apologies are, you don't hear them very often at all anymore. But it takes a bigger person to be able to walk up and admit to a wrong than one that just tries to pass the buck again. We all know he did it. But he's trying to bass the buck. How many times we see that? And I'm going to tell you something also. Um, admitting to a wrong doesn't mean going out purposely and doing something wrong and then saying, oh, I'm sorry, without having any kind of true feelings about it. Admitting you're wrong means that as soon as you find out that it was the wrong decision or something was wrong, say, hey, you step up to the plate and say, hey, that was my decision. And this is why I made that decision. You always have some reason for it. And you admit to it. 
So that also brings into the point of integrity. You see, a servant leadership has integrity. And they're constantly trying to make sure that their word is their word. And whatever they say, you can believe that that's what they're going to do. Well, the service leadership, that kind of guy, you never know whether he's going to keep his word or if he's going to change his word. Because he always has an answer. Well, my friends, that's kind of the message I have for you for this week. So I want to hold you with that. Think about that a little bit. Are you a servant leadership type of person? Is that what you want to be? Or are you a service leadership type of person? Is that really what you would like to be? Would you like people to follow you willingly? Or do you want people to follow you because they're afraid of you? I want to thank you for taking your time out this week to listen to this podcast. And again, share this podcast with a friend. Um, I'm really trying to get the word out with Surging Forward here. And I want to thank you for... I didn't do the introduction for this before because I wanted to wait till after this time. Um, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, put my views on anybody, but I'd really like for you to share it. I'm trying to get the views out. We're coming up on our 50th episode. This is episode number 48 right here. And it's like, wow, it's it's been a year already. And we have a pretty good following. I've got people listening in Australia. I even have, uh, I think, two listeners in Japan the last time I looked at the stats. That's pretty cool. Um and I have different uh, listenerships throughout the United States. I think I'm in probably five or six different states. But I'd really like to get this shared out. So if you can kind of share this on Facebook, if you go to our Facebook page at Surging Forward, you're going to see the video come up here. And uh, we also publish it on YouTube. And I'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because I'm hoping that's going to be the medium that I start producing some of my free online courses. And again, whatever you want to hear about, uh, feel free to send them to me. Now, later on, I'm going to have some paid courses also. But I'm looking at putting some online courses on the subscription page uh, on YouTube. But I want to get that subscriptions up a little bit uh, to make it at least worth my time to make sure that there are going to be some people listening. So for those of you that are listening to this podcast, if you are on YouTube, check out Surging Forward on YouTube. You'll see us. You'll see all the podcasts there. and You'll see, I think, one or two training videos I've done. I, I haven't done one on the code class. We did the live one a while back. But subscribe. And, again, I would really appreciate that. And once I get up to about 100 subscribers, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll put some of the YouTube training videos on there. But, again, I, I want to make it a little bit worth my time there uh, to get that out. But I want to thank you for your time for listening. And I also want to say that, you know, I appreciate all of the positive responses I've been getting also. And feel free to send me your questions. You can send your questions to Dave at surgingforward.com. And if you have any code update needs or you need your code renewal for your license, we do offer those code classes now on the www.surgingforward.com website. And we have courses also that will help you get your license. Or if you're looking to go into business for yourself, that's some of the things I'm looking at developing some courses on to help you go into business for yourself. But we also offer the prep um, classes for your exams, for your contractor's exam, all for various states and different things like that. So check out the surgingforward.com website. And that has a lot of things in there for tradesmen, for electrical, HVAC, plumbing, fuel and gas, uh, contractors, and some of your various sorts there. So again, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of you for this short time. If you're driving in your car, make sure you're driving safe. And if you're working on the job site, listening, make sure you're working safe and staying safe on the job site. But share this podcast with a friend. Let them know about the podcast. And by the way, you don't know what a podcast is? The majority of my listeners are on iTunes. But if somebody doesn't have iTunes, they can listen to the podcast also. I did do a video on that. You can check that out on the Surging Forward page on how to listen to a podcast if you don't have iTunes. So we're really kind of getting out, and I really appreciate all the encouragement I've gotten from my friends and stuff. And for the following week, I want to say stay safe and keep surging forward. we got a lot of cool things coming up ahead, so stay tuned, my friends. Keep sending those questions in, because that's what keeps me with the subject lines and keeps things going. 
So you guys have a great week and continue to stay safe and keep surging forward. God bless. Talk to you soon.